Well, now that we have our part modeled, why don't we look at getting one of them 3D printed? This is when we can see our designs come to life and be able to hold them in our hands. There are several types of 3D printing. Today, we're going to look at FDM, Fused Deposition Modeling. That's where the printer takes a filament of plastic, heats it up to just below the melting temperature, and lays it down a layer at a time. We'll be using the GrabCAD print software to process the parts and send them to one of our Stratasys 3D printers. Several of the Stratasys printers out there will use this same software. You can actually download the software for free, even if you don't have a printer. Just go to grabcad.com print to get started. When you get it installed, you can choose a printer template to see how one will work. There are multiple FDM printers, as well as object printers on the PolyJet side. We're going to be using our F-170 here in the Houston office. We can either use ABS material or ASA material. Those are the common materials that we use. So with GrabCAD, we need to add some models to our build. A lot of the 3D printers out there will use an STL file. But one of the nice things about GrabCAD is it can actually open up the native SOLIDWORKS files. So I'm going to open up the finished version of the skateboard file. When we're looking at getting this part 3D printed, a lot of this is about orientation. How do we want to orient the part for strength, aesthetics, build time? There's a couple of things that can come into play. We can come in and choose how to print the part. Do we want to print it solid or sparse? With a part this small, sparse probably won't help too much. Okay, I can control the support material, I can control all kinds of things about the part. Maybe I want to come in and print a couple of them. I'll right click on the part and say duplicate. Maybe bump it up to three. I can hit the estimate button and figure out how much time and material it's going to take to print this part. Once this is done, we can see that the build time is a little over three hours uses 1.8 cubic inches of model material and 0.8 cubic inches of support material. Once we're happy with the design, all we have to do is hit print and sends the part to the printer. If we go look at the queue, it shows the part that I'm currently running right now, and then it also shows the skateboard job coming up next. We can come in and click on the show slice preview option and actually go through and look at maybe just the single layers. We can see the green is the model material and the orange is the support material. We can go up and down through the layers, see the support material that's needed for the holes in the skateboard. Go back and show all the layers. Support material can either be picked off or thrown in a tank and dissolved with some concentrate. So printing the parts should be easy. That's all we have to do is come in and find an orientation that we like and hit print. So maybe I went a little bit overboard on the 3D printing. We've definitely printed some skateboards. And we took the skateboards and then added trucks and hardware to make them functioning. They actually work pretty good. But then we've got the skate park design. And so I went ahead and printed some of those as well. Uh, I went in and added magnets to the parts so we can rearrange things depending on how we want them to be set up. For the main base of the skate park, I actually printed it in five different pieces. The different walls, I glued it onto the top, put the logo on the front. So this is a fun little design that we've played with. Even printed one of the parts here on one of our liquid resin printers in full color. So we'll look at a video for that, for that part a little bit later on. 